Hi guys, Kellen and I spend all of our time trying to figure out how to navigate complicated cannabis challenges. Today, we are excited to bring to you a solution for your accounting needs. Navigating 280E, keeping clean books, and providing financial and accounting advice is a massive headache for so many businesses. End to End is a team of CPAs with backgrounds from the big public firms that specialize in the cannabis industry. End to End is offering a no-cost consultation if you tell them the dime sent you. That's right, free accounting advice. Go to n2nadvisors.com now to take advantage of this. That's n, the number 2, n, a, d, v, i, s, o, r, s.com to get free accounting advice now. Let's talk about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. That's right. No more excuses. Get your lazy ass off the couch. Go start a podcast. There's the creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Once again, no more excuses. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Could it be easier? Even better, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. That's right. They're paying us for this ad. Thank you very much, Anchor. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started now. This is The Dime, a 10-minute dive into the cannabis and hemp industry through trends, insights, predictions, and tangents. Is that even possible, Evan? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, You know, in the pharma space, uh, you can look at a line that's making tablets for people to take, very similar to, to how you'd look at this gummy bear manufacturing line, where the materials are either being pressed or, or whatever. The, the way in pharma it's done is, uh, or traditionally done, they would steal some of those gummy bears coming off the line and send them to the lab to analyze. And it would take days. And, you know, what would they find out? If they found one out of the 20 gummy bears they pulled had too much or too little outside of there, well, what are you going to do? That batch is already made and the bears are mixed together. How are you going to pick them out? You can't unscramble an egg. But what, what could be done is at that point where the material is being poured into the molds before the nozzle that actually distributes it, you can install an optical sensor and we would use a known quantity of a known spectrum of light. Uh, We'd shine it through the material and we would detect how much of that light is left after it goes through the material. And whatever is missing has been absorbed by by the chemistry inside the material. Different chemistries absorb different wavelengths of light, and we can look at the pattern of what we get back compared to what we sent and determine how much of the various elements of interest are in the sample. In this case, it would be THC or CBD, and we'd want to make sure that the number is steady as it flows past the sample, at at which point we'd know that it's generally homogenous. I think that's a great breakdown, and I... I I think it's funny, right? The the batch loss and, and when an organization loses a batch, then it looks to implement these sensors where Kellen and I scream from the rooftop, put the instrumentation in place prior because if you lose the batch, that's a lost sunk cost. And then you have to invest in the instrumentation an additional cost. So now you're out how much versus if you just instituted the sensors beforehand, You've got yourself monitoring the process, saving your batch, and probably saving resources, costs. Right. You, you haven't even accounted for the amount of time you've lost going through, I'm going to set up, I'm going to make a bunch of stuff, I'm going to make three good batches, and then I'm going to have a terrible one. And now I have to go and figure out what I'm doing to ameliorate that situation. You've lost a year. Like, like a, a whole year, probably. And probably tons of, of capital. Yeah. And it's, it's, 
you've seen this with all the other industries that you're implementing these sensors in, and it's only a matter of time before cannabis is like, huh, I, well, I can understand I, what's going on in real time. I can make these adjustments. I can make sure that my product is within acceptable quality standards that we adhere to. Absolutely. I think cannabis is actually a really well positioned market to take on this technology into its landscape, run with it and do phenomenally because it can, the cannabis industry has this sort of like Silicon Valley tech feel to it in a lot of, in a lot of ways, the way it attracts money and drives sort of, uh, non-traditional business models, although there's plenty of traditional business models too. And, and I think that a hot application or a series of hot applications based on, on good high technology could really fit very nicely into the cannabis industry really quickly. And within five to 10 years, we could see one of the most efficient chemical manufacturing operations in the world. The one challenge I, w I wonder if people will hear this and then believe, who, who needs to be running this piece of instrument? How, how can we implement it? Do we need to have a scientist on site in order to handle this? What's the best path in order to kind of integrate this into our process? So uh, I will start by saying shameless plug alert. <laughs> you, you do not need a scientist on staff. We uh, at Helma can bring our scientific expertise and do the development needed to implement these sensors into, into a wide variety of processes in the cannabis, in the hemp space, in the further down the value chain, in uh, formulation of final product, in uh, so everywhere from extraction to the end. And we, we can build up the application for you. You don't need the scientist on hand. The, the equipment once in place is simple enough to operate and the, the insights can, can be gleaned from that. Can you share some insight on return on investments you've seen from other industries? Um, in industries where they have to do HPLC-based QAQC throughout a manufacturing process, uh, including certification at the end, it typically takes about a year to start showing profit on your investments. And that's calculated by looking at the cost of the, the consumables you use in the HPLC testing over that time and the cost of the, the laboratory staff and their continuing education and all the other costs that go into that. And the, the idea is these are otherwise highly trained individuals and they're doing the same test over and over and over again for you. They could be doing more research and developing next generation products and ideas, but instead they're, they're doing rote tasks that don't even need to be done offline, that can be done continuously and leveraged into big data insights and, and control schemes. That's really interesting. So let's, let's, let's hop into the prediction time. When do we expect to see sensors for the first guess in process in the cannabis industry? How quickly? Oh, uh, well, I'd say that there's at least one out there already. Uh, and there have been some other companies that have tried and left the space. Uh, but sensors from our group uh, can be, we can launch with off the shelf product that we have to develop with you right away. Uh, or we can custom tailor a solution to a specific application and that, that development cycles probably nine to 18 months. So I'd, I'd say, you know, by, 
2023, we should see, we should start seeing uh, growing adoption in this space. To be continued. Tell me, boy, you make me so bored. You need to walk the other way. I tell you once more. Hi, my name is Kira Reed, and I'd like to invite you to be inspired by the women who are leading in the cannabis industry. Each week, we will discuss empowerment, leadership, and what it means to be a woman in charge in marijuana, hemp, and CBD. As the founder of the Women Empowered in Cannabis community, I have had the great pleasure to get to know many brilliant and talented women who are CEOs, executives, politicians, advocates, and community leaders that are focused on creating a cannabis economy that is just, fair, and equal. We'll learn how these women make decisions, how they navigate a predominantly male industry, and what they're doing to level the playing field for women. I hope you'll join us.